Hello and welcome to another episode what? of the F- Face Podcast. What are you doing? My name is Jeff Ramsey. With me, as always, Andrew Panton. It is 3 p.m. on the dot, which is when we start. Gavin knows <laughs> this. He's always exactly on time. He's got a good 35, 40 seconds before he comes in. Speaking of Gavin, I didn't introduce him because he wasn't here yet, but I'm assuming he'll be sliding in right on time. Well, he the, just the dis- dispenses. What did he say? He's rebooting his computer at 3 p.m. Rebooting. Why would when did he you post re- that? Right now at 3 p.m.? Oh, I see. I'm, I was scrolled up. Sorry. I wasn't up to date. Well, that's a weird time to reboot your computer. That's the, that's the time that we start. He's now one minute late, which has got to be, I think, personally uh, catastrophic to his psyche. I, I know how much he hates inconveniencing others by being too early or too late. And here we are pushing towards 3.02. Uh, this is w- episode 114, season four, year three. Is that right? No. No, year season two. four. We're, we're still in two, I season believe. Season four. What's On our the way three, to three? Then? Season four, year two. I don't two. know. This is your thing. I don't remember how it goes. <laughs> I have no fucking idea. It's this long. This is your thing. It's, it's been so uh, long. I would argue that this podcast is our thing. but It uh, is, but this the, the naming convention is... It's yours. You've done this. Season four, year two, volume one, episode 114. Uh, I feel like my voice may be betraying uh, <laughs> how tired I am. Uh, can I bring something up just before Gavin please. gets here? Yeah, um, please. I don't understand the year and date. I produce the podcast and I still don't understand the naming convention. It makes no sense. Yeah, I don't I don't get it. I don't get like the seasonality of it. I don't get like what year I I don't know what year this is. I don't like I I just I go I just explained I go along it. This is it. this is season 4. We determined okay. that after okay. season 3 ended and season 4 began. Season 5 hasn't started yet, so clearly we are in season 4. Uh this is the second year that we are producing this podcast in, hence uh year two and then this is the first iteration of this podcast that we've done hence volume one uh episode 114 that's just the number it's just the 114th one of these we've done that one's easy to figure out that's the only number i care about actually yeah when when would we have a volume two i'll tell you the exact moment i stopped caring eric was when Uh we we started this i was like we should have an extremely long like 172 episode season and then yeah. season two be three episodes and then jeff changed the season the next episode and i gave right. up i just right. no longer i, I punted <laughs> i have no clue where we are why we're we're in the position that we're in all i care about is the number that jeff doesn't seem to care about at all <laughs> how, how about this how about i stop that and then you just do the intros from now on and we can do whatever the fuck number combination thing you guys want to do no i enjoy it i'm just lost in it I yeah, have no, no issue I, with it. Again, I just I just said I didn't understand. I didn't say I didn't like it. I just said I no, didn't it's understand great. it. And and also, you said whatever number thing we want to do. I felt like we were really clear about just the episode <laughs> number being the number thing. All we right, so do. fuck it. We won't do year four to year two. We won't do the volume. I just said I didn't understand. No, I wasn't yeah. saying don't do it. No, no, no. It's no. good. There's. I, no, no, no. You could, there are, there's no room for complaints uh, in, in my brain today. You're clearly complaining because you don't understand it. You're not complaining because you like it. You're not saying, I don't understand it, but I love it. You're saying, I don't understand it. I don't get the point of it. So we just won't do it anymore. We I wasn't are, complaining. I was, just, I was saying that I didn't understand it. I was saying I didn't understand it from the podcast. Until Gavin got here. It is D Lord. It no longer exists. This is episode 114, I guess. Why are you fighting? <laughs> uh, because We're you're not. four minutes late. You did this. This is That's your fault. Um, We're dropping the volume and the seasonality and the year count- counting because Andrew and Eric don't understand it, and I don't want to confuse well, them or overcomplicate their little brain. To be fair, this opened with you didn't remember what it was. I figured it out. You know, you know, anybody else can start the fucking podcast at any fucking point in 114 episodes. It doesn't always have to be me. I got to say something to start the podcast. So uh, how about this? I retire from starting the podcast. You can start it however you guys want to, and I will sit back and I will not judge you for one, and I'll let you go, and whatever the numbering, naming convention you guys want to use is is fucking awesome with me. I'm going to take a break for a couple years and let you guys handle it from here on out. Gavin, how are you doing? I hate to say it, guys. I think Jeff's in a bad mood. I think Jeff might be in a bad mood. I realized right as I press reboot, I didn't need to do it. I remembered what the problem was with my sound, and then... uh. I don't really know how to stop that process. What are you? I'm so confused. When did you realize you had an issue? Well, my sound, my mic wasn't right. And then uh, usually I fix it by rebooting. And then I remembered that I'd actually muted it in the setting somewhere as it was rebooting. And I was like, oh, 
That's a fight. That's five minutes gone. <laughs> Flushed those five minutes. Is this the latest you've ever been to a show? Uh, three minutes, four minutes. Four minutes? Yeah, I think might it might be. be. I think it might be the latest you've ever been. I'm embarrassed. It was odd for you to say rebooting <laughs> at the time you would join. Because I kind of assume you're just waiting in the wings to hop in. Like you're there a few minutes early, but you just wait it out. The fact that it was like time to go and you realized your car wouldn't start was a very odd <laughs> post. <laughs> Yeah, I was outdoors like six minutes ago. I'm sweaty. What were you doing outdoors? I was ripping vines off the side of my house. That <laughs> My house is being engulfed by nature. We really shouldn't have built stuff, I feel like. What do you mean? Nature's taking it back. Oh, well, it's a constant struggle, right? You gotta, you gotta reclaim yeah. what's yours. You gotta fight nature. Sometimes vines can be a good look, though. I can enjoy a, like a viney side of a house. I guess <laughs> You're it, a vine guy? I could be a vine guy. Yeah, it has to be very specific. You don't want too much, but vines can look nice. Was it a thing that it would like damage the house unless you you removed it? Yeah, it was sort of creeping inside. Oh, so okay. I killed it yesterday, <laughs> and that and today it's just like shriveled twigs, but it's still stuck to it, and I'm ripping it down. There's like dust, and now there's marks all over it. What are we talking about this week? I don't know. Andrew's got a lot to talk about, so why don't you just kick it off, buddy? I have a lot to talk about. I heard you say that. You said that to Eric when I came into Pleasantry. Oh, I, said, well, I, I have a lot to talk about today, but I can't talk about it now. So I'm Gavin, assuming... you were four minutes late, and look what look what's happening. Was that bad pleasantries as well? No, did pleasantries go too long. I think pleasantries were good. I was just what I was saying, Jeff, when you came into it is I have a lot to talk about because we we filmed Survive Block Island last week, but I can't talk about any of the specifics of it because it's not going to be out for a few months. So I have plenty to talk about in that way, but I can't actually say any of it on the show, unfortunately. I feel like that'll have to be one of our future episodes where we debrief after that show's over. I would love yeah. to be a supplemental, maybe. Yeah, we were talking about that uh, as maybe a supplemental in the pleasantries. Um, I think some people recommended it in the, some comment leavers recommended it, but uh, I agree. And let me just say right now, um, you know, we, we filmed Survive Block Island, was it last week? or t I can't even remember. Last, last week. week. And... Um, you know, obviously, it's not going to come out until, I believe, September. And if you're not familiar with what we're talking about, it's like uh, we recreated the game Survivor in Minecraft. And then uh, this was the second season. Gavin and Andrew were both in it as contestants. It's all shot and done and in the can. But obviously, we can't discuss it uh, because that would provide potential spoilers. And this show is not going to come out for two months. But what I will say, and the only thing I will say, is that I, I genuinely appreciate the professionalism that you're both showing by being uh, in the same uh, online room together, as it were, sharing in a conversation, uh, <laughs> despite, despite everything that transpired. Uh, I'll, you guys are nothing but professional, and your ability to hold it together right now, it's, it's masterful, and uh, it's something to be studied. Congratulations, It was Steve interesting. Up. It was a great experience. It was, yeah, it was layered. There's a lot to say about it. Can I talk about the thing I told both of you already? I'd like to hear Eric's read. I don't feel like that's a spoiler for anything. If I'm vague about specifics. I don't know what you're on about. Yeah, you're so fucking vague. Nobody knows what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I did a thing that's arguably worse than the shift key. I think I could talk about that without giving oh. anything away. Oh, my God. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah. Did, you did. I mean, are you... you mm. Here's why it's stupider. <laughs> You're a fucking gamer. I don't play on the PC, though, at all. I didn't know. So for context, I don't I, I never play games on the PC. I'm purely console. When I was first told I'm going to I'll talk to you. I'd love to hear your opinion on this, Eric. Is this worse than me not knowing the shift capitalization thing? When this started, I was told before the experience even began, I was like, how do you go full screen? And I was told F11. And I said, is there an F11 key or do I have to hold F and the 11? To which what's I, the hey man what's yeah. the 11 yeah that was there's the 11 that was the, <laughs> there's not there's not an 11 key so it's off to a terrible start I've, i have no idea how keyboards work <laughs> i have no information about anything but so no matter what in filming you're there first day last day <laughs> i just imagine you holding f the number one and then the number one on the numpad yeah right it's the other side he's just like this isn't good for my hands like, it's a capital i <laughs> keyboards suck <laughs> it's dumb um, we got to sit you down and teach you the keyboard one day. That would be great. I'd love that. Because <laughs> the Mac, it doesn't have an F11, a Mac keyboard, or at least mine doesn't. I don't know if other ones do, but I'm not familiar with the F section. Anyway, so we film everything on Survive Block Island is over and the shoot's done. And I realized I left my computer on and I'm, I'm like, oh, I'll shut everything down. But I realized that the server was still open for where we film things. And my partner was in the room and I was like, hey, I can show you some of the stuff that I saw. Like, this would be cool. 
And so I load in and I'm, I'm, I'm moving around and uh, I'm just like showing them things and they immediately say, can you go full screen? I can't see anything. To which I went full screen and I, I had filmed. So when you're watching Survival Block Island, know that every single moment you see of me, <laughs> I played the entire, my entire experience was in windowed. I was in the no. tiny, I was in the tiny window mode. Every time you see me in the show, what? I got the tiny window. I went full screen. It blew my mind how much easier it was to see everything and how big everything looked. I don't know about your computer, but when I open Minecraft and it starts windowed, it's, it's not just, it's like small windowed. It's like yeah. less than 50% of the screen. It's like oh, mine. Yeah. Sweeper. It is. It, it does a great <laughs> comparison. It was the exact size of Minesweeper. So every single moment you see me in that show, know that I'm experiencing it through a Minesweeper size screen. God damn. Wow. You didn't think after day one just to be like, yeah, let me figure this out. Um, you know, it's, you have to move files around so much, and I was unfamiliar with everything. So I like just being able to click to like Audacity and the different programs. It never even occurred to me to go full screen. And then when I did, I realized, holy shit, this is like a completely different different game this is also, so much easier to see God. also gavin you're assuming he made it past day one we don't that's, know that he made it that's past very day fair one. it's a large assumption oh dear oh dear so i i did that i explained to my partner that i had not i had been in window my entire experience and uh uh, they said that I was a lunatic and that this is worse than me not knowing the shift key capitalized. So I was just curious, Eric, how do you, how you feel? You played with a colossal handicap. That's insane to play in the windowed mode. And then it's crazy to think that there's an 11 key. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, really, like, it's kind of a one-two punch. Like, it you could have looked at the keyboard and then said, oh, there it is. To be clear, these were very separate. This was, like, before the experience began and after. I knew the F11 by the end. I just never used it. I was by aware of end. how to do it. Guys, guys, let's be fair. I knew what F11 was by the end. I had to clarify. <laughs> On my Mac keyboard, F11 is my volume down, so it's actually a frequently used key for me. Yeah, but it's just there's no F on it, so I don't know. I didn't know there's the fucking F section. I never use a keyboard that isn't a Mac keyboard. <laughs> I have a Mac keyboard, and it's got an F11 on it. I'm looking at it. Does it? Well, yeah. I'll take a fucking yeah. photo of my, my keyboard. And then well, you can I see. don't know why you're throwing around the F word so much. You seem There's a lot of swear <laughs> words happening right well, now. Well, he's looking for F11. I'm looking oh. for F11. Yeah, it's not the fuck 11 key. It's The F doesn't stand for anything. <laughs> oh. oh Eric just yeah, that's it. my keyboard. It's got the, the volume on it. I even have a smaller, dinkier one that's... Well, let me get out a window so I can see this photo bigger. <laughs> F11. I don't see the F11. Where's the F11? At the top? Oh, the little numbers. I don't have those. Are, hang on. Hang on. Oh, you said wait, that you knew where whoa, the F11 no. key was by the end. Wait, and now you're telling me that wait, you don't know no, where no, the F11 no, no. key is. Okay. You're right. You just know. I, right. you, no. I think you just exposed yourself. No, I knew where the F11 was on my other keyboard. I didn't think that my Mac keyboard had any Fs. You're right. It's just so small. I've never noticed. The whole upper row is F1. You're I don't right. need a picture of how small this is. It, yeah, what are you talking about? I just have, I, it's, listen, it's noticeable when you look. I just have never looked that closely. <laughs> so wait, it's small, but it's noticeable. But you know where it is, but you've never seen it. Well, okay. I knew where it was on my Alienware keyboard that I never used. I learned that. And up until this moment of you sending that screenshot of that, the little letters, I never noticed it on the Mac keyboard. Where did you think the F keys were? I just didn't think I had any F keys on my Mac keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Taking a screenshot. Those right F keys are for those luxurious one percenters. They, uh, I'm just, I'm, it's I'm the latest. I'm just floored. It's a whole row. You just <laughs> yeah. thought that there was just a row you don't use. At no, all, I used period. the row. I just didn't know it was the F row. I use the brightness all the time. I use the volume all the time. I just never noticed that there was an F on the little, little thing. Oh, man. I'm, fl I'm fl I hit another. I apologize. You know what? You know what? I understand. I thought I had already hit bottom. I had not. I, you know <laughs> what? still falling. I take back some of my anger from the beginning of the podcast. I get why you don't understand the number thing now. It's uh, oh, Now, in fairness, look at his picture. He has a, a sort of squished F section. It's a very tiny F. It also seems to be covered by copious amounts of food. <laughs> I need to, yeah, I ate lunch. I ate lunch at okay, my desk today. Okay, but hang on, hang on. There are, four, there, are th there are two keys that all they say is F5 and F6. F, that's what, okay, that's Jeff's exactly what I was going to say. If you look at those keys, say. it's all you yep. would see. That's all there, that, it, that's all that there is, and also, they're the only keys with something in the bottom right, which immediately would make you go, what is this? Yeah. Uh, okay, when I look yeah, at it, my brain- you got F4, you got Cess 
sesame seed. You go F6. <laughs> you go F6. <laughs> First of all, that's onion ring. There's some onion ring <laughs> remnants. That's the, that's the main correction I need to make. Second of all, I'm going to be honest. I would look at those keys and go, that's 80% blank. Those just do nothing. Those are just blank keys. That's how I'd process that. <laughs> I've never, oh I just, I figured no point. I'm never so gonna if a what key looks eighty percent blank to you, you write it off. You don't pay yeah, attention do. to the other twenty <laughs> percent. Yeah, You're like well, it's not guess, worth my time. Yeah, I guess they fucked up this keyboard. They didn't even print anything on these buttons. What? Here's Where's the one? problem I have with that, Andrew: the escape key, the shift key, the tab key, uh, and the return key, and probably the delete key are all eighty percent empty. The spacebar key is one hundred percent empty. Absolutely true. <laughs> Absolutely true. That's true. But everybody knows the spacebar, and there's like bold lettering on the shift and enter. Like there is, the letters are important. The F five and F six are very small and, and not very bright. They're they're dim. It's dim, dimly. They're the only thing on that key. Yeah, I just I don't know. I don't. I've never. I've never. What would I even use the F five and F six for? F five is refresh. Refresh. I can refresh with F five. This is insane. I, wait. What is? Ha are you for real? <laughs> How do I? I'm gonna. Wait. We're gonna do an hour long training course, and we're gonna go through every key. <laughs> What kind of fucking Mavis Beacon wait, bullshit is this? Wait, you don't dude, know what wait, F5 does? Wait, wait, how do I, do I have to hit like enter or shift? Dude, shift F5, F5 might be the most frequently used F enter key on my F5. keyboard. Absolutely. Go, just open like a browser window. I'm in my browser. And then hit, okay, and then go to like just some other page and then hit F5. It doesn't do anything. Oh my God. Oh anyway, wait, you're on Mac or I'm Windows. on Mac. Yeah, maybe it's a control F5 on there. Is it a control? It depends Command on the browser, F5? I think. I think yeah. It, I think it depends Command. on the browser. Shift F5? I'm just, I'm floored. <laughs> this rules. Guys, can yeah. we, while he's figuring out letters and numbers, can we take a step back and think about, like, just how ludicrous this is, uh, zeroing in on the keyboard and how we've, we, I, I agree. I think we all agree he needs a class, right? Here's what, here, here's what's really scary. Does he know how anything else works? Does he know how a fridge works? Does he know how an oven works? Like, do we need to have just a basic class about all things? Like, uh, clearly Andrew's managed to navigate this far in life, but oh, no. how many things is he using wrong or incorrectly? Or how many things is he missing? Just in day-to-day -day shit. We need to watch him. We should study Andrew. I would like to sit in Andrew's room for a week and just take notes and deliver the results to him at the end. I feel like Andrew, we'd be, we'd be like, we'd be sitting there taking notes and Andrew would go, wait a minute, you're telling me this car has a reverse? <laughs> I no. can go backwards in a car? I think I run into issues where there are shortcuts. Shortcuts are really my problem. Because I just manually, when I refresh, I just click the little spinny thing in the top left. So I've never even considered yeah. that I'd need a button to refresh. I, but you're saying, like, in your ideal world, you would have two keyboards, one lowercase, one uppercase. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? No. Well... I love the caps key. This is very, this is established. I'm a big caps lock guy. I love having the button. But that's a shortcut for everything being uppercase. Wait, so apparently to refresh is command R. Come on, R. That's okay. how you do it on a Mac. So F5 doesn't, I don't know what F5 actually does. What is the equivalent of F5? So I don't know what F5 Yeah, is. I'm on Windows, so F5, I use it in folders, I use it in browsers. F5 is decrease uh, keyboard brightness. That's why there's nothing on your keyboard for that. What you would do would be assign something to the F5 key. I see. So it is a useless button. It's not useless at all. For if, me. For you, I'd say, yeah. If yeah. Andrew, I wouldn't be surprised if Andrew said, you mean to tell me I can get it. There's something colder than putting stuff in the fridge. I just never opened the other side because it's smaller and therefore I deprioritized it. It seemed no. like well, we already found out last week that he'd eat, he leaves something in the freezer for about four, four days. before. Yeah, that's it. true. That's true. What do you mean? Are you coming at me for the freezer thing? Listen, I know freezers are important because of Outcast. I'm aware of the cooling system. There is something cooler than cool, and it's ice, and you get ice from a freezer. Ice cold is the coolest. Outcast is oddly educational. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think to for a certain speed up a Polaroid <laughs> for a certain kind of person, I think it is. Yes. Yeah. Although I don't think I'm not sure shaking it actually speeds that up. It does, does it? not. Didn't Polaroid uh, come out and say like, "Please don't shake your photos." That doesn't work. Yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> they're like, "That's bad advice." They're not. They're not. They're not professional <laughs> photographers. Okay, so F5 and F6 on a Mac keyboard would typically increase the brightness of the lights on the inside. I don't have those. So in my my specific case, I've been right to not use F5 or F6. Can we call this? F 
Fuckface episode F114. <laughs> Why not? We're throwing all yeah, the name whatever. the naming conventions out the window. Doesn't matter. This ad is brought to you by HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Savor every last second of summer with HelloFresh. HelloFresh delivers fresh quality produce from the farm to your door in less than a week, allowing you to enjoy the delicious flavors of the season right from home. Skip the grocery store and spend more time soaking up the last of the summer sun. HelloFresh Market is a one-stop shop for all your mealtime needs with a curated selection of breakfasts, lunches, snacks, desserts, and more. Heading out for one last vacation? Update your delivery address and enjoy HelloFresh at your vacation destination with just a click. Plans are flexible, so they work with your changing schedule. I've talked about it a lot. I love HelloFresh. It's so easy to make delicious food. You get exciting new recipes. The ingredients are great. It saves time. You don't have to go to the grocery store. It's incredible. I love it as a service. It is fantastic. So go to HelloFresh.com slash Face16 and use code Face16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts that's hellofresh.com slash face 16 and use code face 16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts thank you it's summer lighten up dad grass is great anytime they can help you chill out before a big meeting or be a new replacement to that evening glass of wine they're the perfect pairing to everything summer has to offer dad grass is legal organic hemp that relaxes your body and mellows your mind. Dadgrass CBD products are made with 100% organic hemp that's easy to dose and the effects come on smooth. They offer a variety of products from their token smokable pre-roll joints as well as hemp flour and a variety of CBD tincture drops. Enjoy the effects of CBD while keeping a clear head. All Dadgrass products are federally legal for ages 18 and over and it ships right to your door anywhere in the U.S., Go to dadgrass.com slash face to check out their products. Whether you're looking for a new buzz or a chill way to enjoy an old favorite, Dadgrass will leave you in a euphoric mood. Right now, Dadgrass is offering our listeners 20% off your first order when you go to dadgrass.com slash face. Go to dadgrass.com slash face for 20% off your first order. That's dadgrass.com slash face. So that's just, I just want to talk about that, Survive Block Island. We should definitely record a thing at some point discussing yeah we'll do we'll do a supplemental where we dig in at some point later i would love to i would love to talk to you guys about your experiences uh of it uh anyway so yeah i think that'd be that'd be a good piece of supplemental content for us we should also watch that monkey movie i'd love to we need to do that speaking of movies there was an exciting uh reveal today i was very happy or not today i guess earlier in the week time is ridiculous I, uh, I got confirmation that our tuxedo has arrived. It's now in our possession. Where is it? It's somewhere in the office. It's in my office at work. <laughs> you, got, you got one of Jackie Chan's tuxedos in your office. <laughs> yep. Uh, the bow tie comes in its own separate tiny bag. So it also has a bow tie. Can I ask you a question, Eric? Yeah. Did you smell it? I didn't. I kept it in the bag because all I, all I did was open it and then open it to uh, like open the package and then also open the uh, envelope to make sure that the certificate of authenticity was there. All I did was visually confirm that we have received the tuxedo and the certificate of authenticity because I want to get I mean, I guess it would be Jeff and Gavin together to yeah. have a look, take it out, inspect it. And then, you know, Andrew can also be on the call and he can sort of see Apple style. But, um, you know, we should get together and, and have a look at the tuxedo. Tuxedo unboxing. Yes, correct. I think it would be great. There's a really, really good chance that when we crack that open, which, Gavin, you should be involved in because you love to smell new things, uh, freshly yeah. open things. <laughs> There's a really good chance that that tuxedo smells like Jackie Chan did in 2002. <laughs> wow. This is a lot of responsibility. We've got to preserve this thing. Yes, this we do. This is like movie history. We can't, we like actually have to take care of this. Yeah, it can only be, it's only going to be worn once and that's for the photo when we recreate the poster. And even then I should wear some sort of protective layer between my <laughs> body and yeah. the suit to protect it. We're not going to Kim Kardashian this thing. We're not going to rip a $5 million dress. You're, we'll take very good care of it. And then we're yeah. going to hermetically seal it and uh, store it away for safekeeping until the, the museum happens. I'm excited about the museum. That's going to be a great setup. There's a lot yeah. of potential. We got some good stuff for the museum. I found the uh, 
the thrice to meet you the other day. So that's now <laughs> perfectly preserved in a drawer, oh, ready for fantastic. the museum. Dude, that's awesome. You know, I used to have the original wrist pocket prototype, and I think I mailed it to a. I think I mailed it to Rebecca. Maybe I gave oh. it to somebody. Damn, should have held on to that. I was about to yell at you for mailing some of our museum to a to a listener, but I think Rebecca's fine. Yeah, yeah, she she can have that. And she'd probably also mail it back if we wanted it. <laughs> we'll make her a, a different one. I was uh, I showed this to Jeff, but uh, I was before Survive Block Island. I figured I'd watch the first season just so I'm not a disadvantage. And um, I and Meg wanted to watch it with me, so I cast it up to the the TV, and I had to type in a code for the Rooster Teeth app. <laughs> <laughs> and I was very insulted <laughs> by what our app just randomly generated there. <laughs> that was your random randomly generated code. That was my random code. Gavin's code was C U U C K. Which is great. Uh, uh, <laughs> an emphatic <laughs> cuck, dude. <laughs> That's a hard cuck. <laughs> oh, God damn. It's so funny because I just got socks that said the same thing. What a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> it's me delivered you. Oh, yeah. man. It's some cuck socks. <laughs> Speaking of socks, and you know, we were talking about the... Uh, I, had a bu- I had a bunch of dumb ideas about socks last week, but I did have an idea the other day. What if we sold just red socks? Just a pair of red socks. They don't say anything on them. It's just red socks. And you just buy or beware. And you can give them to people that you want to curse. Mm. Okay. So it's like a gift, but the, only the giver knows they're bad luck socks. Yeah, they're like bad luck socks, but they don't... But maybe even maybe you should even like, I don't know, curse them in some way. I would say bless them, but that maybe your blessings what? would be a curse to other people. Like, can, Gavin- you reset, can, can you reset this? Why are the red socks cursed? I don't remember the cursed red socks thing. Oh, Gavin's got bad luck socks. I had bad luck when I wore the, the red socks. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, so, and then you want to sell just socks that are red that are cursed by Gavin? Yeah, maybe, like, bad luck socks. So then you could prank people, or, like, if there's somebody, <laughs> like, say you really, really don't like your stepdad, right? Uh-huh. But you got to get him a gift for Christmas. Give him red socks. He'll think, oh, wow, little Eric loves me. He got me the red sock. He got me, I mean, they're ugly and I don't wear red, but whatever. He cares about me, and so I'll wear them. But me, you know, inside, you're like, that's right, motherfucker. You're going to get a flat tire today. And he probably will. Do we want to do like two versions? Like one, you buy them blank so you can curse them yourself. Or, or there's like another option where I've pre-cursed them for you. We should. Just like how you signed all the baseballs. That's interesting. That's interesting. Would you be willing to pre-curse a, a round of socks? I, I could curse a hundred socks. <laughs> Okay. Okay. hundred pairs i guess i just boy <laughs> wow i could curse a hundred socks is a great episode title for this that's pretty good thank you uh, i'm just imagining me just sitting over the pair i just like i'm sitting cross-legged on the ground i put them in front of me i got my hands hovering above them and i'm just like you little f- f- <laughs> just like Okay, now now we Boy. have to do it. I wasn't serious, but now we have to do it because I gotta have the we had to have that video. I don't understand. <laughs> Did you do that to your own pair of socks? Like why? Because no. you have curse. So-, so what are you doing? Why does that curse them? Why is that well, the curse? I don't think all. Surely not all red socks are cursed. Yeah. by default, they don't print the curse on with the red dye. No, I, I think. <laughs> But they say somehow red socks become bad news in Gavin's presence. So if all these I red see. socks are in Gavin's presence in some way, and he makes a point of acknowledging the sock, I think that's key. You know, he the sock has to know that he knows, and then we all know, right? And so I think that's how the curse works, probably. I just got the Slack notification for the merch channel from Eric. We want to sell red socks that Gavin will curse, and then we will sell them. <laughs> I think it's self-explanatory. <laughs> I think that that really sums up what exactly they need to know that we want to do. Uh, man, so speaking of merch, I have one more dumb little idea. I don't know if you guys saw, but one of our uh, peer podcasts, uh, the one that Eric, Eric is also on this one. He likes it less than face, but he still is on it because it's his job. And he, he once again, Eric's a professional. But that other podcast, Face Jam, the food one, uh, they released a very funny item. They released a like a switchblade fork called a switch fork, and mm-hmm. they sold out in four minutes, which I thought was really cool. You know, 
Uh, I thought that was awesome that they were able to sell hundreds of those things in four minutes. I will say what was annoying was all the people in the comments saying, well, I wish Face could sell merchandise this well. I wish Face could run their, uh, could sell on time when they say they do like uh, like these guys do. Uh, so we were catching some total shade that was unnecessary. But that got me thinking, like, what would our <laughs> Switch Fork be? Because I, I well, wanted... We've already had a four-minute yeah, sale, haven't we? Yeah, but I'm the, I'm saying that like they said when it was going to go on sale and it went on sale and it worked. We were catching right. shade for like, you know, our stuff goes on sale whenever. And I was thinking like what would our version of a switch fork be? Because I I'm nothing if not opportunistic, right? They did all the R&D on this thing. They found a vendor, they got it made, they established a relationship, they proved that they could deliver the product, the product then sells. So then how do we capitalize on their hard work? And I, I had, how do you, how, what if we made, instead of a Switch Fork, Switch Blade already exists, Switch Spoon is obviously too obvious. We'd have to be like, a, it had to be like our flavor. What if we made a Switch Fuck? And when you hit the button, just a little sign pops out that just says fuck. <laughs> switch Fuck. Like, what? like when Joker has a gun and he pulls the trigger and it says bang? Kind of. That- yeah. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or imagine if it was like a switch comb, except the co- there were no tines. It was just a solid piece of plastic. And on it, printed in white letters, was just the word fuck on either side. I, and then so I if somebody think... gives you some shade, you pull out a switch fuck, and you hit the button, and you just show them the word fuck. And they're like, whoa, okay, I'll back down. I think I'd rather have like a tiny bat, like a switch bat, like a small, because you're expecting oh, like a from knife. emergency baseball. Yeah. I think a tiny bat is very funny. Like a switch bat? Like you hit the button yeah. and the bat pops up? Yeah, like like typically like a switch blade, obviously, as a weapon, you expect a blade. Nobody pulls out a tiny bat in a fight. Like it's almost useless. Yeah, but th- see, that's a problem. A tiny bat is useless. I think a switch fuck is useful because it conveys a message emphatically. I think they're equally useful. I think both <laughs> things are equally needed. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think there's something to the switch balls. fuck. Here's the deal. I would love to see a design for it. Here's the deal. It's going to sit in your head. It's going to be a little it's going to be a little brain worm. It's going to sit in your head and in a week you're going to be you're going to be clamoring for the switch fuck and you're going to go like, "Oh, it just took it took it a while to sink in for me, but I get it now." Well, let me ask you this. How small can a grown tube be? That's an even yeah, I like that That's a lot. That's a great idea. A little switch one of them and be like, "Oh." <laughs> <laughs> you hit the button and it goes <laughs> <laughs> it's just like a little click. It doesn't even have enough time to make a sound. It's just it going to the other side of the plastic. Oh, man. Stupid stuff. Speaking of stupid stuff, Jeff, Jeff and I seem to be able to exist pretty well away from each other. As soon as we saw each other on the set of uh, SBI, just because Jeff was in the control room and I was in a little room off to the side. Day one, we're just like shooting the shit, talking about stuff. And day one, by, by the way, you say day one as if there was a day two, but we don't know that there was a day two because it's possible you were the first person eliminated. We can't give anything that could approach a spoiler. So day one or only day, you were saying. So the first day of film. No, wait, is that, is that any better? It's the no. same. It's the exact same. Just say on day one. You just, I got told off for saying day one. <laughs> well, I don't know what to say. I'm going to be. Day a- one's fine. Everyone was there on day one. Yeah. Okay. 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 I think it implies that there was a day two. Well, no, because we, no matter what, but everybody plus- has to be there on day five. No matter what. That's true. That's true. That's you true. always have to That's be there true. day one and day five. Every day single one person five. Yeah. was there day one, day five. Everyone had multiple days. All right. So should I say that again? No, no, no. you're good. <laughs> Just go. <laughs> so- <laughs> What's wrong with you? Just say it. <laughs> so day one, I'm talking to Jeff, <laughs> shooting the shit in the kitchen. Jeff immediately reaches into the fridge for some sort of can of something and punches the shelf that <laughs> all the drinks are on. And all I hear is like, all the drinks are going flying. He's punching it. He's like, ah! I'm like, what is wrong with you? He eventually pulls the drink out, closes the fridge. We talk for like another 30 seconds and I fumble coffee all across the kitchen. Spill. It was actually like within 60 seconds. <laughs> our, our worlds just tip upside down. We had to just walk away from the situation. I don't know why we just combine and form stupid. <laughs> we're like, we're the blunder twins. You put us together and it's just a form of a puddle of idiocy. It's that we can. <laughs> you're absolutely right, dude. I knocked over. I, by the way, I got. I'm a grown up. I get drinks out of fridges all day long, every day. I'm real good at it. I don't ever fuck up. <laughs> I probably got what? drinks out of that fridge 300 times through the course of last week. I fucking, within one second hanging out with you, I knocked over 42 cans, maybe. 
just catastrophe. And then you shot coffee off the roof. I still don't understand how you did that. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those like fumbles where, you know, you try to catch it just makes it go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> My immediate question is how shocked were you, Jeff, that Gavin said hi in the same space as you? That he took the time. <laughs> it's the immediate thing I want to get to the bottom of. Was this instant? Did he run over? Did you get a sense that he has learned from his past mistake? What was that? I like? I will say that uh, when Gavin told me, I, I took it. I took what he said to heart in the last face, and so when I saw him, <laughs> I just had faith. And we spent plenty of time uh, around each lovely. other. It was lovely. <laughs> it was almost. <laughs> I mean, it's weird, right? Because Gavin and I used to work in the same room mm -hmm. all day, every day. And then we lived together, too. So we'd go home and work together and live <laughs> together and drink together and play together and do everything. But pre, you know, we've had a pandemic the last couple of years, so nobody's been working in the office. Yeah. And before that, probably about a year before that, I had left Achievement Hunter. And so I was no longer working with him every day. I forget how much fun it was to share an office space with you, Gav, and just to be around each other for more than, you know, 30 minutes at a time. Dude, it's fun as shit. It's it like, we, we, like we combine with two separate entities that combine and form just stupidity. But we also, it's very creatively good. Yes. Like we both, you'll have an idea and then we'll just add to it. And we end up with good stuff. Well, like we should honestly just spend more time together. Oh, not filming. <laughs> and I, and I, I don't mean this. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to work with uh, a lot of really creative people over the last 19 and a half years. Uh, all of which, or some of which are in this uh, on this podcast with me. And I mean, everybody on the podcast is a creative person I've been fortunate enough to work with in the last 19 years. I'm, I'm just trying to make sure I'm not shading anyone. Uh, in addition to Gus and Bernie and all of Achievement Hunter and all the people that I've worked with, I, uh, I, I don't think I've ever had a creative partner like Gavin. In, in, and I don't know that I ever will again. I've never been so creatively aligned or been with a person where like, it must have been what it was like for the Beatles. Not that I'm comparing us <laughs> to the Beatles because they have talent and what we do is dumb. <laughs> But where it's just like, it's just like every, everything is good. Every, like everything that when we get together, it's just like, I don't know. It's awesome. It's hard to explain. It doesn't happen that way any, with anybody else for me. I appreciate you guys described yourself as a Voltron of incompetence when you get together and then immediately <laughs> went into the Beatles. This is fantastic. I mean, that's often how it would happen at home too when we lived together is that Jeff would, you know, walk into the kitchen, smash a glass, booze would go <laughs> flying over the, over the back of his head. And then we'd sit down and make... A game what? in Minecraft that worked first time and everyone could play. While I had to raise my arm above my head to stop the bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> I probably bled more around Gavin than anybody else in my life. I don't even know how. <laughs> what a weird... I've seen you bleed at least a pint and yeah. I've not even been there for all the blood. <laughs> <laughs> this is a strange measurement. Probably a gallon of uh, vomit too. Oh yeah, definitely tons of vomit and poop. Uh, have I seen poop? Uh, yeah, but you, I don't know if you've seen it, but you've been around me while I'm full of poop. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. like when we live like together. Walk into my room, hey, I just shit myself. Or like, dude, <laughs> don't come into the living room for a minute. I just shit all over the couch and I got to clean it up. You were literally like in my doorway and I was like, oh, how much shit? And you were like, I don't know. I haven't really looked yet. <laughs> it was like in your pants. <laughs> I just, you're the first person I thought of. <laughs> you come to me Wait. before the toilet. <laughs> You shit on the couch? One time, yeah. How? Oh, no, well, not on purpose. But what I think was, I was the, what, what happened? I, well, I mean, this is years ago, so okay. uh, I'm going to make some assumptions. I'm going to assume I was drunk uh, or hungover. I'm going to assume I probably wasn't eating well. I'm, prob I'm going to assume I probably thought I farted and then realized oh, very no. quickly that it wasn't. Oh, no. Because that's usually how it happened. <laughs> you may have shit yourself awake. I may have, I, I have pooped myself awake before. And you know what? That's it, impressive. It, that might have been it. That might have been it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a terrible way to wake up. I've never even considered that as a possibility. I, I, I'll awake. say this, probably better to wake up than not. That's fair. <laughs> but in the context of waking up, it's pretty bad. It's a bad way to wake. I, I realized it, by the way, um, last week or the week before, I read out one of my notes that I didn't understand. It was uh, tuna, tuna fish can spill in the sea. I realized what that was afterwards. Ooh. Hmm. Tuna fish can spill in the sea. Apparently there was a boat <laughs> full of like tins of tuna. And I thought that is so messed up that like amongst the swimming tuna just came down a bunch of their like canned brethren. <laughs> and how just messed up that is that humans basically caught them 
canned them and then spilled them back to where they were from. Like, what? How pointless. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like if you just go outside and you're like, ah, it's raining coffins again. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly like that. I was trying to think of other equivalents, but that's perfect. Oh, How man. did you realize what that note was? What was the moment where you pieced that together? I think I just reread it. <laughs> <laughs> that's all it took? Yeah, sometimes you just need to sleep on something, don't you? That's fair. And I just remember that the article about, I think it was like... Like over 50,000 cans or something. 50,000? That's so many. Yeah. Wow. But to be honest, that's probably, that'll probably be edible for a while. Although, or, or mm. will it rust? I uh, ooh, rust. But I don't know. Maybe it'll rust open and uh, <laughs> release them. Oh, God. <laughs> Some wildlife can enjoy the, the technological advantage of canned food. <laughs> it's the cycle of life. <laughs> That's a real that's a real thank me later for the for the wildlife of the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, speaking of thank me later, did we talk about my 1000 day puzzle idea? No. No. I had an idea the other day. What if we sold a 1000 piece puzzle, but you receive one piece a day in the mail randomly and so it takes a 1000 days <laughs> to put it together. It. I would be so annoyed. Create a, a puzzle with the biggest carbon footprint possible. Yeah, it could be a, well, maybe it'd be local. I'll, you know. <laughs> 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 Maybe I'll deliver it on bicycle. Uh, <laughs> can you imagine? Like, it could take a hundred days for you to get two pieces that fit together. I, How I frustrating would that be? Oh, I would be infuriated. If you want that to talk about such like, a fuck you gift to somebody. That's the worst. That's way worse than the cursed socks. I would yeah. kill somebody yeah. if they gave me a one thousand day puzzle, one piece at a time. It would have to be combined with like the. F face zine or something where it'd be yeah. stapled to the front every week oh. i had that i had that idea because emily showed me a tiktok of some dad who got his daughter a puzzle for christmas a thousand piece puzzle and when she opened it up he had individually wrapped all thousand pieces so she had to unwrap <laughs> a thousand puzzle pieces and i thought they're already wrapped you should just portion out how you send them <laughs> aye, aye, aye. oh man what an inconvenience what's the worst what's the worst gift you've ever got that was not intended to be a bad gift this is pointless. The tiny bike. Tiny bike? Oh. The tiny bike I yeah, got Jeff, us? Yeah, I got Jeff you. got me a tiny motorbike once. <laughs> I did. It didn't work. What? <laughs> he did, he like arrived, arrived home late one day, uh, just smashed into my bedroom, woke me up, probably one, one in the morning, and just wheeled in this tiny little micro motorcycle. Oh. And then I was like... Uh, Thanks. And then he, then the next day we tried to use it and we pulled the little like engine start cord uh -huh. and it just snapped. <laughs> <laughs> we, never, we never got it running. It was a little hunk of junk. I bought it like I bought it off some dude drunk one night. <laughs> he was like <laughs> he was just bragging about it. he had this little bike and I was like, I'll buy it. And then uh, yeah, was, I just love the idea of you being out at a bar <laughs> and you're like, oh, it's, it's not like, oh, let me buy this gift for my kid. It's like, oh, let me buy this gift <laughs> for my 20 year old foreign Dude, roommate. I'm not putting Millie on that thing. She was like six at the time. <laughs> <laughs> it <was> ridiculous. <laughs> well, well, inappropriate gift. Been something else. I mean, <laughs> she got something else. It wasn't a binary decision. It wasn't like, well, I can oh, give okay. something to Gavin or my dog. Well, it's got to be Gavin. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't an either or. Oh, okay. That's like a double, because I think I'd be really excited when I saw the tiny bike. That's a great surprise, and for it to not work would be so disappointing. Oh, I wonder if I have a picture of it in my old bedroom. It, I'll, be I'll do you one better. It's it. in a video. Uh, remember, it is. I think the breaking of it is. Yeah, the things to do. We used to film the, these videos called Things to Do's, where we'd do like, come up with like a, a task to complete in a video game that was unintended, right? And, uh, and then we would try to, for very, very briefly, we did that for years, but very briefly after, we would try to recreate that task in real life in some way. And so uh, we were trying to do something with the motorcycle. And so we definitely filmed it. I don't remember what the video would have been, but... I'll have to see if I yeah, can Yeah, it was around it. the time where we were like, trying to throw a cabbage in a bucket in yeah. Skyrim, and then we would do it in real life and throw it to the next one. That was fun. That was fun. It's a great video. And now just look. Oh, I found the, I found the picture. You found oh, the picture? Oh, I want to see. Can I see it? <laughs> I left that motorcycle under my old house, and as far as I know, it's probably <laughs> still there. That's way cooler than I was expecting. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> that looks like a bike. Good, I'm a good gift giver. That's yeah, that was my uh, bed for a while. It was just a mattress on the floor. I slept like that for a couple of years, I think. And then, uh, and then I, I think I had like six things in my life. It was like desk, chair, TV, bed, and then I got motorbike. You'll also notice that Gavin has something leaning against his door, so I can't bust in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that was, that was mainly because of uh, Poppins. Oh, the dog. Because yeah. he 
because he could open the door. Yeah. And he just busted in at night, so I had to put the <laughs> table against him. <laughs> Yeah, but you learned that if you, like, that would stop the dog, but you learned that if you kick the door hard enough, it would sling the table across the room. <laughs> so when we moved out of that place, there was a big, like, sheared off section of paint that went up the door. <laughs> I forgot about that. That's right. Yeah. Well, I wasn't taking no for an answer in those days. <laughs> yeah. The, the, I never, I didn't really have to dust that room that much, but I did have to sweep up the paint chips from around the door area. <laughs> oh, man. I was, I gotta say, good times. I was not looking forward to doing the podcast today, but you, I feel better now. Thanks for improving my mood, guys. Oh, I'm glad we could help. Yeah. I, I'm so impressed with this. This is an all-time buy by you, Jeff. You shouldn't feel bad about this purchase. This was a great purchase. However much I, it cost, it was a great idea. It was, and it didn't, I don't remember, I think I paid like 500 bucks for it, maybe. Uh, but that that's a, fair. That's a guess. It's just a guess. I, it could be wildly wrong. But uh, I had always intended to get it fixed, but, you know, in those days, there was just so much happening, and we were doing mm -hmm. so many different... It just, like, it fell by the wayside quickly, you know? And you just never get... It's kind of like... It's kind of like face lore, you know? You you leave a joke for two weeks, and then suddenly it's been a year and a half, and you're like, sure. oh, yeah, right. Ping pong balls. Yeah. Orange ping pong balls that say 19. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when are we going to use that ball generator to bet on roulette in Vegas at some point? I think so, Yeah. I think that was the plan. I don't remember. I still have a ball on my desk. I have 48. I don't even know if that was the one you guessed, Jeff, but I have 48 on my desk for some reason. Hmm. I'm assuming that's why. Did you ever have it? That reminded me of um, those little like battery cars. I always wanted those as a kid. I never got one. You'd see the commercials for them where it like, looks like a fancy car, but kids can drive them. Is that like the type oh, of speed like you could get? Like the little Barbie dream car? Yeah, kind of thing? but yeah, but they had yeah. like other ones. They had like Batman themed or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like they had they had all sorts. I always wanted one of those. That was one of the gifts I never got as a kid. I wonder if that is the equivalent, like the bike equivalent. How fast were you supposed to be able to go? Uh, <laughs> I think that thing went like fifty miles an hour, like <laughs> at a ridiculously what? dangerous speed. Fifty? That's yeah. insane. Yeah, I remember the guy telling Dude, me to be be really careful on it because it goes <laughs> way too fast. <laughs> We gotta do tiny bike redemption. We should get one that works. Oh, yeah, let's that'd do be it. great. Let's do it. I mean, that thing is. Do they make electric ones now? I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do. Did you ever have one of those cars, Gavin, when you were a kid? Did they have those in England? Yeah, I didn't have. I didn't have one. I didn't even. That was such a like in my mind. That was such a rich kid gift. I never mm -hmm. bothered asking. Yeah. You know, that's like it's yeah. like it's yeah. like <laughs> I, th there's no point to even even ask because it's mm -hmm. just like because I know I knew what the answer would be immediately, and then I would just feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know like there's, there's some stuff as a kid you're like man totally whatever yeah yeah there's no like point. as i as i said that was like for me the gift i always wanted never got i don't think i ever asked for it i don't think that was ever even a consideration on a list you just see the commercials be like that's fucking cool that looks awesome i remember always thinking that way about whenever you'd see ads for i, I assume it worked like shit but like those kids virtual reality games where you yeah. have like a little gun and the thing. Yeah. And I always remember thinking, oh. that's got to be the coolest thing. Uh, but it's like one of the, yeah, one of those things you don't even bother asking. No. It's like, oh, it's like 200 quid. Did you ever get, <laughs> did you ever get surprised as a kid by an awesome, awesome gift? And then it turned, like you weren't even expecting it, you didn't ask for it. And then it turned out to be fucking suck for like reasons outside of your control. Like when I was a kid, laser tag happened. Um, mm. you know, we just went and played laser tag for your birthday, Gav, right? Uh, had a, had a blast. Yeah. Well, when laser tag act, like first hit the market as a product, I was, I don't know, maybe 10 or 11. And like, it w I felt like every kid on earth had it. Like every kid in my school had it, but me, everybody mm -hmm. had it. And it was like, whatever. I, I was one of those things where I just like, it looked like it cost hundreds of dollars. And so I never even thought to ask, but for Christmas, my fucking grandma got me laser tag and she got my cousin, Adam laser tag, which was awesome. Except I lived in Alabama and he lived in Florida. And so <laughs> I had half of laser tag that for two weeks in the summer, and on Thanksgiving and on Christmas, I could play. And the rest of the year, I had to put the laser tag receiver <laughs> on my dog and then get her to run around the yard while I tried to shoot at her because nobody else in my neighborhood, even though somehow every kid in school had it, nobody in my neighborhood had it. And so I had the most useless, badass oh. fucking gift that did oh. no, nothing. I like the idea of it being intense that you both have to always be equipped with the receiver at all times. And you just never know when an attack's going to happen. <laughs> never expect it. <laughs> He's just in class one day and it starts beeping and you're, you, you came. Yeah. surprised that sucks yeah i was like you just like staring at it in the bedroom you just like 
put it on the wall and just lay in bed and just go pew. <laughs> pew. <laughs> or whatever. And you're just like, God damn it. So, so close to fun. As a kid, I really wanted this clock because I've always been like kind of into like funny clocks. And it was one of those, th- you know, those pins. You get like a set of pins that you can like smush your face in and it gives, it leaves like an impression of your face mm-hmm. in the pins. Yes. It's a clock that was made out of them. So I assumed looking at the picture that the pins would like slowly move out like and like make the time. Mm. And I was like, oh, I really want this clock. And it was like quite a lot of money at the time. So it was my only present that year was this new clock. And I plugged it in and I didn't realize, but it, it didn't like slowly move the pins. They would, they would all be like, and every time the minute would change, it'd be like, and it was in my room and it used to keep me up. If I was like, if I was in a light sleep and it would go, it would go from like 11.59 to midnight all of the digits would be like, bah, 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 bah. And I'd be like, oh, I hate it, but I don't want to not use it because it's my time. <laughs> that was probably my most disappointing one. What's your What's your most disappointing gift, Andrew? Oh, I'm trying to think. I was always so bad at gifts. I remember it's not a gift story like specific, but you know how there's like mall Santas and that type of thing. Yeah, I was with my friends. And uh, we're like going to go to a movie and there's a mall Santa there and we're like, oh, you can go see Santa. And I was still at the age where I believed in mall Santas. I thought it was a real thing. And I just remember having so much fucking anxiety in line trying to come up with a gift idea to tell Santa that I would get at Christmas because I didn't know what I wanted and I didn't want to ask for a shit thing. I was like, what do I want? What do I actually want? Do I want this? Because I, I thought there was a possibility that what I said in that moment would actually be my gift. And I came to the conclusion, this is such, I could come up with anything. My best option I came up with by the time I got to the front was the Matrix on DVD. That was my great idea. (laughs) And I just remember as a kid telling Mall Santa, I want the Matrix on DVD (laughs) and being so disappointed with myself that this was like the best thing I could think of. And that you'd send it all the way to the top. Yeah, I sent it all the way to the top. Matrix on DVD. Never got it. Never got the Matrix on DVD. Never came. (laughs) I got a boat once and it popped immediately on the first thing because I had this giant toy Godzilla and it put a hole in it. That was a pretty bad gift, I guess. I only got one use out of it. <laughs> what? So it was like a blow up boat? It was a blow up boat. Yeah. And my grandpa and I went in. I was probably like six and we're like paddling out. And then immediately I had this big Godzilla toy from the Matthew Broderick Godzilla movie. I loved it as a kid. <laughs> And it had all these sharp edges and it immediately put like a little hole in the boat. So it started to take on water and we had to go back. And I never, that was the only inflatable boat I ever got. I got to use it once for like 10 minutes. (laughs) You couldn't patch it? No, I just, I don't know. I I was seven. Like it was in my head. It had a hole in it. And then the adults dealt with whatever. Like it just, it was out of my life. Also, like when I was a kid and I would get blow up stuff, it would always come with a little patch kit. And that would be the first thing I threw away. I'd be like, fuck this. (laughs) (laughs) I, uh, what you were describing with the Matrix, that's how I feel. And this is a relatively new development. I wonder if it's uh, a sign of some sort of cognitive decline. But uh, that's how I feel at all drive throughs now. When I have to look at the drive through <laughs> board, especially the worst is Taco Bell. It's like trying to decipher uh, like Sanskrit. I like I can't I see it all at once and I can't, all at the same time and I can't focus on any of the thing and I never know what to order and the person's waiting and I get so stressed out. Oh, it's been like, it's happened to me today. It's brutal. The worst is, have you ever gone back through a drive through Like you realize that they forgot an item and then you have to loop back around and that, that kills me. Uh, that's, yeah, that's just so nice. awkward. Yeah. Having to go back and explain, no, I don't need to order something. You forgot this thing. Oh, you didn't read. Like it just, it becomes a whole process. I hate drive throughs They're terrible. Does it usually, I'm sure it, surely it happens quite a lot though. And they're not weird about it. Yeah. It's <laughs> just internal anxiety. I, uh, right. I ordered uh, this place called Taco Shack uh, the other day. This is maybe three months ago now. I got lunch for Emily and I. I was out and uh, I just called her and I was like, hey, do you want me to pick something up for you? And she was like, yeah. And she told me what she wanted. And so I went through the Taco Shack and I paid for it and everything, got the drinks and all, got home and came inside and gave her her drink. And she goes, where's the food? And I was like, (laughs) uh... I guess I left it in the car. So I went to the car and there was no food in the car. And I had to sit down and I was like, I think I, I, think I, just, I, think I just drove off without it. Like, I think, I think they handed me the drinks and I left. And she was like, well, I guess you got to go back and get it. And I was like, well, I'm certainly not going to do that. We'll just, I'll just order something. Uh, and so she went, she's like, I'll do it. And she drove over and got the food. And they're like, yeah, we thought that was real weird. The guy just took off, but here's your food. <laughs> 
<laughs> I was so embarrassed. I couldn't do it. <laughs> I think you'd have happily buy food again Dude, from somewhere. I was just going to buy, I was just going <laughs> to order that. something from, from Postmates. I was so embarrassed. There was no way. I got all the way home and I still didn't realize. I was in my house <laughs> drinking a Diet Dr. Pepper <laughs> and I didn't realize I didn't have the lunch that I went to get. That's incredible. Ugh. <sighs> That's great. So uh, I enjoyed that episode. Up. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good episode. Uh the 114th, I believe. Uh thanks for listening. Uh and if you uh, wouldn't mind telling a friend or a loved one or an acquaintance or maybe just a coworker about our little podcast and maybe convince them to listen to an episode or two. I don't know what a good one to start with would be. A lot of people, well, I don't know. Well, what's a good episode? We should. We, I always see people ask, like, what's a good episode I could recommend a friend to? This one. There you go. Eric said, yeah, always start with the most recent and then work your way backward. Uh, that way you're learning a story backwards. And it's, it's, uh, what? It, what? What if we made the ideal first episode? What if we just oh. made that? What if we made... Well, you remember? Can that be the next episode? We have to record one more. Can I, we just make an ideal first episode? We're I don't think two? so. I don't think so. I think we need to... Yeah, it's on the calendar. We already talked about it. Can you not do two? I just got nothing for the next one. Oh my God, we do this. Everyone came into this one going, I got nothing. I got nothing. This is ridiculous. Well, we talked about a bike and a, and I, it just doesn't even matter. Maybe I got, I got, I got, be, I got two things for the next one that I didn't get to. Okay. So, Maybe you guys uh, can explain what F9 is to me on the next one. We'll really cover the bases. We'll go one by one. I'm going to, I'm going to say, Andrew, I love your idea. I love your idea for the ultimate first episode. I think it's great. But I think that to, to Eric, I think it's going to take a little bit of prep on our part to figure out Absolutely. what a perfect first episode would be. We'll have to put our heads together and come up with something. I agree. Do you remember uh, when we tried to make the best uh, minute or two minutes of all time? And it was the worst <laughs> we've ever had. I forgot about that. That was great. There's a huge danger of us repeating that. Uh, <laughs> anyway, tune in next week to find out. Uh, maybe it'll be a great first episode. Maybe it'll just be a regulation normal episode. But the uh, you'll you'll never know unless you tune in to <laughs> Face episode 115 coming to an ear near you. Hey guys, Major League fan Jack here with a look at next week's episode of <laughs> Face. The boys want to go death diving. Jeff still can't take pictures. It's the holy grail of baseball cards. Panton says goodbye to the Choco Taco. What is the difference between Chuck E. Cheese and Showbiz Pizza? We're an ice cream podcast now. The honey monster is terrifying. And once again, Andrew does not eat the pencil. All that and more on next week's episode of Face. <laughs> <laughs>